ready. Hello and welcome to week six of Heart of Ruin, a D&D Fire Emblem crossover. How's everybody doing? Excellent. Awesome. We're just about ready to jump into where we last left off, which was pretty much a cliffhanger for multiple reasons. Who wants to give it a recap of what happened last game? I'll do it if no one else wants to. Go right ahead. All right. So, um, I just got here, but uh, from what I know, from my perspective, uh, we've been stuck in this town for about six months now uh, with nothing but, uh, you know, human flesh and blood to drink, eat or drink. Everything else turns to ash in our mouths. Uh, there's been all sorts of spectral uh, wraith-like figures flying around at night outside the town. Uh, and, uh, you know, after about six months of watching people try to escape or so, uh, they just can't. They'll get ripped to pieces like, you know, like they're made out of bread. Um, so, you know, a, a night or two ago, five people just came walking through the mist like, like it's nobody's business. And, uh, so I went over to investigate who these people are. They're going up to investigate that, uh, couple of big black shadowy hands that are coming out of the church at night. Um, uh, so I joined up with them. So currently we found our way into the church. We, uh, found a secret passageway that led down forever down into the basement. And, uh, where we left off last night, we all wound up in the same room together, staring down about a 30-foot, uh, monster. It's off in the distance, all we can see is shining eyes and glowing teeth. Uh, but it looks really big and it looks really scary. Yeah, that definitely fits what happened. <laughs> Go ahead and gain Excellent. an inspiration. Thank you. So... With that, we bring ourselves back into Heart of Ruin. The group stands in horror looking at these two lapis-colored gems that seem to radiate ire and malcontent as they bob back and forth in the darkness, slowly moving towards the direction of the group with an ear-piercing growl echoing around the dome-like cavern or abyss that the group finds himself in. Flashes of red teeth begin to show in the darkness within kind of the two shimmering gems as it starts to make its approach. Your torchbearers, Sebastian and Vannon, look at each other for a quick moment in hesitation what to do next. Remembering also the path down here barely had enough room for Scram to be able to move or crawl. So a quick escape for everyone, not sounding like the most possible option. So with that at the start, before anything gets further into what's happening, you guys have a short moment to converse with yourself, essentially, as you hear these noises coming closer. Scram's too fat. No, I'm kidding. No, you're not. He really is too fat. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, since we got down here in the dark room, I've had my axe up above my head, ready to brain whatever's coming out of here. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna draw my sword. You're muted. If I have a moment, I'm tar I'm casting glass, targeting uh, Kane, Vannon, and uh, and Scram. 
Not this new fellow, though. <laughs> I don't know who this yeah, fellow is. Yeah, screw that guy. Half the NPCs you dealt with have been untrustworthy folks. <laughs> hey, to be fair, uh, you weren't here for this, but I did ask if I could nibble on one of you guys if you go down, so... Great! Yeah, not casting bless on you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't I was being polite about it. Annalise has, has a quick moment where she casts it out and looks around and says, I think we better prepare ourselves. Oh, I'm ready. Whatever's out there, you come on out. I also cast Shaylala. Shaylala? How do you pronounce Shalala. it? Shaylala. That's the one. Shaylala. <laughs> I'll figure it out one day. It's a good thing. I like that one the best. That's the one. Punch it. Yeah, punch your phone. That's great advice. <laughs> it's called a technical knock. Maddox Gamer does not Press endorse you punching your phones. <laughs> <laughs> so, with you, you muted yourself again. You casting your spell and oh, both of them, actually. Mm -hmm. The darkness Actually. still seeming to be very limiting. Anything else you guys want to do? The darkness is super limiting? Yeah, because you're only able to see what you can. Does it seem like a magical, oppressive darkness, or just beyond our vision? Beyond your vision. Okay, I'm going to look over at Van and kind of give him a nod and take a few cautious steps forward. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I keep pace with whoever's going up front. I take a minute to look over and kind of assess your character to see how I feel about this. What looks like a civilian, or at least what seems like a civilian at first uh, meet, um, keeping pace with me to fight this. What what do I see as I look over at your character? Um, you see a. Uh, he's about sixty years old. Uh, he's a Danny DeVito-shaped man, about, uh, I don't know, maybe 260 pounds, something like that. He's, a he's about as wide as he is tall, uh, which isn't very tall, and, uh, he has a very ornate one-sided axe that he's got up over his head, um. Ornate as in well-used, or like a polished mantelpiece? Uh, yeah, I guess something kind of polished like a mantelpiece. It's got, like, ornate designs all up on the head of it. Okay, okay. And d is his clothing similarly ornate, or is it more like peasant? Oh, art? no. No, um... It's definitely working-class kind of clothing. Okay, so her first impression is you're some elderly civilian who stole a mantelpiece when the city kind of went to shit. That's fine. Great. Right. She kind of gives you a look and says, um... Do you want to stay back with the rest of the group? I ain't never been a chicken before, and I ain't gonna be a chicken today. Uh, all right, then. I, I kind of, again, give Vannon and Sebastian a bit of a look. He did want to make this choice. He survived this long. Oh, something to be said for that, I suppose. Come on, let's see what's out there. And we continue our slow forward approach. Very slow. Yeah. Tiptoeing into the darkness. I want to ask Barnabas for... No, not Barnabas. I'll ask anybody for a torch if they have one. Uh, yeah, I got a few left. Hold on. Uh, I swing my backpack off my shoulder and dig into it. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let me double check. And... Oh, yeah. I still got eight of them left. Uh, I dig out one of the torches... And, uh, pass it to Kane. Cool. I get a torch now. <laughs> I'll stop Is my, it lit? Stop my fingers. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, pleasure. Kind of eye you suspiciously. So suspicious. Being so nice to you guys. We've had a lot of, uh... Least I wouldn't get any closer <laughs> to the ledge than that. Well, didn't you call Scram um, a crippled baby last time or something? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, there was a, uh... Okay, so when they were coming down the stairs, we couldn't see them. Uh, 
we just got told that uh, I just heard that this dude's coming downstairs and there's some guy walking very slow down the stairs. My first impression is that there's some crippled kid he's bringing along with him. Uh, and nobody really um, argued that matter, so. I can't imagine how anyone could mistake Scram for a child. It was dark. Back into the game. Uh, Annalise looked down and... Uh, I wouldn't get too much closer to that ledge unless you want to get yanked off. Didn't know there was a ledge. And she kind of takes a half step back. Yeah, it's same. Do you have a torch to throw or something? Yeah, why not? I'm throwing away all the other ones. Uh, I'll take another torch out. Might light me up, bird boy? Sorry, I forgot your name. I believe Scram has the light spell too, by the way. We just have to wait for Ellis to get here. <laughs> oh, gotcha. That's oh. why we were all lighting torches in the first place, because Scram was still upstairs and fighting his way through the narrow tunnel. So don't don't light the torch yet? Well, I mean, I really wouldn't. Well, it doesn't matter. Eh. Up to you. Do your torches. Nah, I'll keep them if this dude's got a light spell. If, you, if you're telling me that. Scrum, do you have a means to create light? Am I there yet, or am I still in the tunnel? I am on the map. Um, yep, I just sort of like clack my staff in the ground and a big old beacon of light just pops out of it. Yeah, I've got one. I shoved the torch back into my backpack. Okay, looks like he's got that covered. Um, torch light. Looks like 30 feet. I'll drop the 40, 40, 20. Could you cast that on a stone or something and we can cast it forward? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, sure. Pick up a stone, squeeze it, goes all light. Well, that's neat. You think I'd know that trick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, the beacon of light and all, but, uh... Yes, well. Actually, actually think making a quick last cursory look around Scram, there are actually are not any small pebbles or stones in this area. This plane oh. has um, a smooth surface. Then I'll just whip out like a ration from a bag or something. I can hand him a dart. That works. Oh wait, I don't have any anymore. I threw them away. Uh, a dagger works though; they're cheap enough. Here, Actually, no, like I'm this, carrying it into the darkness. I'm carrying 140 crossbow bolts. Let's pull out one. Oh, of there them. you go. That'll work. They're super cheap. Lock off the crossbow bolt. All right, and tell me where you want to put it. I will hand it to someone, along with the crossbow. Um, so who wants to figure out where the light's going? When I was flying around on the other side of the darkness, how far was like a wall or whatever? You were going alongside the wall behind you, not out the chasm. Remember I was flying up and looking around? Yeah, you're flying alongside the wall, not up outside the chasm. You're going along the edges so of the wall to see how high it is. It's definitely more than 60 feet from the ledge, is what you're saying. Yes. Well, I can't shoot for nothing, so uh, I'm going to pass on that offer. I can't say I have any skill with a bow myself. I look over at Kane. Well, I can try. You want us to shoot out into the darkness? Do you have a better plan? To try talking to the eyes. I'll take I'll take the bow and attempt to shoot. <laughs> Crossbow. So what happens if this arrow goes and lodges into whatever's over there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Roll again. She, 
I say as you're launching the arrow out. Roll again, King. So as you fire the crossbow bolt, um, it's a mundane bolt, correct? Uh, yeah, just standard iron. The special part from the light spells cast on it. So, with not much brilliance or anything, you shoot the bolt out. You watch it travel through the darkness. Approximately... Let me gather that up correctly. Seventy or so feet traveling. As it continues on, on, on. Until you watch it hit something and stick. But what you see isn't much that you can fathom. As it hits directly in the head of a colossal sized creature that you can't yeah, even cool. really see most of its features as the light yeah. kind of just hangs there. Yeah, kind of like that. And immediately after doing so, again, the sound billows out. That's and Ken's now, fault, not mine. And now we're moving in initiative order. I think we've made some wise choices. You're welcome. Did you actually get the crit with the uh, with the bow? No, just advantage for firing into darkness. Damn it. Yeah. Sure. Sounds like a Sebastian. Swallower, minute. it's called. Does anybody else notice that? No. Oh yeah. Alright, cool. Who's ready to get swallowed? Yeah. Oh my god. Cool. We're <laughs> Yay! Dark Souls! Let's never detour again. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a detour, this is what we do to leave this town. Uh huh. You feel the air around you growing, beginning to tension, grow much weight around it. Like a gravity effect? Similar to that, yes. Alright. I'm assuming 14 misses. Yes, it does. And as it does, from the side of it, you see the shadows begin to mix and form into what looks like a claw that sweeps around Scram, Barnabas, and Cain. Cool. Uh, 
Oh shit. Ignore that one. Huh? So it can't save? Yes. Plus 1d4 for Kane and Scram. Okay. Nothing, you'll need it. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Nice. As the claw moves past you, you feel a slashing impact as the darkness moves through you, but at the same time, it doesn't really have a solid force as it moves past you like almost mist cutting through you, and as it passes by and retracts into the darkness, you watch as the three of them just seem to be covered in cuts. So each was doing nine damage, yeah? Yes. Yeah, each did nine damage. Bannon. Oh, good. Vader did. Uh, he's gonna fly 20 feet up, straight up. As you do, and the light kind of pierces over it, you notice its head is bent over like someone leaning down to look at something. Yeah, and then I'm going to, um... I'm just gonna test it out with uh, with melee attacks first to see what happens. So I'll go for a spear attack with stunning strike. As you try to hit it with your spear, you impact, but the f gaseous form doesn't even really seem to take much of a hit. You didn't hit its AC. The same effect. Alright, bonus action armed. <laughs> wow. That's, uh, you're still- Plus one d4 to all of them! Right. God bless them. God bless the cleric. So the first one didn't hit still? Nope. 17. Nope. God bless the cleric. Never mind. 19 in. Oh. Nope. What? Wow, shit. shit. This is going to be very difficult. Let's but... run. Actually, 19 just hits. Yay. So it was 8 bludgeoning damage, which is considered magical. And DC 14 con save or stunned. As you do hit it with your damage and it shudders back for a slight moment as it wasn't expecting most likely your damage to actually affect it, which in kind it did. Then I'm going to uh, spend another key point to step of the wind so 20 feet away from it. 25 feet away from it. Is that the end of your turn? Yep. At the end of the, your turn, you watch as it head follows you, as it begins to formulate a dark circlet around its forehead, as it congeals into what looks like a spear of darkness that shoots out at you, as it spins a legendary action. 
That's right. Follow the bird. Twenty-five hits, obviously. Necrotic oh. damage as the bolt impacts and explodes over you. As the darkness laps at you like biting snakes all across your body. Cool. Can you all speed up? I'll go up and hit it. Uh -huh. Go right ahead. 18 hits. Eighteen misses. So that's one hit, one miss. Yeah. Gotta roll damage. There you go. As your sword cuts into its lowered, exposed head, as it reels back from the slice that you inflict. Awesome! Yay! That's all I'm gonna do. <laughs> Alright. Annalise. This thing looks like an abomination to me, and I I want to know what it is. I want to study it. I want to spend my action um, doing some sort of check or a perception check to see what this thing is. Just kind of looking at it in a bit of stunned horror of this giant, de well, obviously demon, because she was able to hurt it with silver. Oh, sorry, he was able to hurt it with silver. Can I do some sort of check, or can you just give me some information if I just look at it for a little bit? Study it? Like a religion check? Religion check? Okay. So looking at this creature, you get the vibe that what you originally thought was demonic nature might be less demonic it might be more spectral and you feel like it has a vibe more of undead than demonic nature looking at this you think back of what you read and you remember these gargantuan titans that the demon king enslaved as tools in the demon world to help gain garter his influence over demons themselves that had the name Swallowers. So an undead titan? Yes. With my knowledge, is this something we can reasonably face? Up until this point, you didn't know it existed, but what it looks like you guys are doing so far, you're fending each other, fending it off, doesn't seem to be overcoming you completely. Great. Um... I, I want to call out, I think it's undead. Something from the Demon King, something he would have used in his wars. We should try gonna, to save it off. Well, I'm going to go make it re-dead. That's the plan. And I want to um, strafe around. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I want to strafe around uh, just to give some distance between me and the rest of the party to avoid the claw attacks. Uh, and I want to cast um, Spiritual Weapon as a bonus action. Uh, to have my spear come down and strike a ten. Spectral spear. Cool. That misses. At least it's on the board. Because it's off. Awesome. 
<sighs> Julie, do the thing. One second. I'm trying to remember where I put it. There it is. I think you have control over it. And, uh, I do not at the moment. Let's change that. Okay, I can cast within 60 feet. Okay, I'll move it. And I'll end my turn just being wary of this thing. Alright, Barnabas. Uh, the lightning bolt in its head, is that the uh, the arrow we shot at it? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I'm just gonna hop on over here and take a couple swings. Oh. That does not hit. Oh, there it goes. And that doesn't hit. Uh, I scream violently as my axe passes through the gas. Like that? Yeah, exactly like that. Like, just right. swinging and missing nothing. Cool. And as you do that, it spends its legendary action to claw at Barnabas, Kane, and Sebastian. Question. Yes. If it's within five feet of me and it's doing that to the others, do I get opportunity attacks? Yes, yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> oh, opportunity oh, attack. You have a sentinel, eh? Yes, I have sentinel. Oh, it's my favorite feat. And we do constitution saves every time he does that? Correct. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. And Sebastian. Uh, can plus one D part of con save. Um, it's meter B, right? Meter B. Yes, DC seventeen. Yeah, meet it, you beat it. Boom. Oh, good hit. Alright, that's 17 damage. Take that, you evil spawn of Satan. That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> does it look like it gets, like, really hurt from that, or does it just kind of like, ow, hey, stop that? Kane looks Stop. like he carves his damage into it. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, it didn't Ooh. add in the poison. Hold on, let me add the, do the other one. Oh, yeah, we wouldn't want to miss that. Yeah, because two people took it. So, just add the poison damage for this one, not the other rule. So, 13 poison. Okay, so this is 16 plus 13? Yeah. Okay. Whew, you're lucky you didn't have the other one. <laughs> yeah, that would suck. Alright, so. Uh... So, 16 plus 13. I'm down to 27 hit points then. What? You're down to 7, you said? 27. Alright, I can't type that in, apparently. Huh. Sebastian falls unconscious. Sebastian. No, 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 I'm, uh, that's, I, it's wrong. I'm I know, still at 27. I'm, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about Sebastian. Oh, Sebastian, my bad. Yeah, Sebastian had low hit points, he should never be anywhere close to things, but... But he's also a monk, he needs to punch things to do damage. Not necessarily, he could be throwing Technically stuff. all about healing, isn't he? Yeah. Well, 
Yep. He held his action. What was his trigger for holding his action? Um, he was going to attack or heal last. Oh, just go last? Okay. Yeah. Alright, scram. Alright. Uh, do, do, do. Yep, 40 feet away, that's good enough. I'm gonna move up here, and I'm gonna cast haste on old Caney boy. Turn him into Sonic. So there's that. Gotta go fast! And how tall is this creature's face? The way it's knelt around you, its face is well over like 50 feet wide. Hmm. Um, alright. I'll save that later. I'm gonna spend a um, sorcery point to bonus action spell. I'm going to throw a scorching ray at it as well. There we go. Oh. Natural one misses. Um, <laughs> that was rough. Scram is the king of all combat. 26 should hit and. 1d4. And 21 should hit. So. There's that for the crit. And there's that for the normal. So 13 plus 11 fire damage to it. And then um, Kane's Easted. Alright, so. You watch as a scorching ray's impact when fizzling off in the distance. As the fire hits its shadow form, looking like it's taking hold, but it also looks like the shadows almost engulf it while it's taking the impact. So resistance to fire, you saying? Okay. Resistance to fire, I'm saying. Fuck you. So, 7 plus 6... 13 plus 11, 24. So, alright. 12 damage. Good to know. Something. But naturally, I think I'll use the rest of my movement to back up a little bit more. This way. Alright, so, Scram uses this yep. last legendary action to howl at you. Come at me, Blue. As you feel the air around you begin to tighten and gain weight. That misses. Yeah. Scum dodges nimbly to the one side. Like a ballerina. Adorable. Don't forget to pirouette. Pirouette. I so pirouette and throw a bloom of flowers with me. <laughs> As you guys begin to hear the sounds of what you could only understand to be lightning bolt strike, and you could see with your span of light, the darkness in this cavernous area seemed to be drawn into the creature. Is it healing? You don't know. Probably. Wow. This is for Sebastian. That's one failed. No. That's rough. As the swallower starts to lean forward. Don't hit it. Its head going up as... You could only watch it with the bolts. Oh, you're trying to move? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Better roll four. Yeah. Better roll four. Nope. Shit. <laughs> nope. I can use my superiority die, right? <laughs> Can. You can if you have precision attack. I do. No hit. 
yeah, you can't move now. Oh, yeah. That's so good. That's so good. I love Sentinel. <sighs> As it tried to lean forward, but with your strike, it causes it to, like, stumble instead of move as it stays in place which seems awkward now as it holds its mouth open and you just see this coalescing darkness begin to manifest in its mouth as in a moment you guys watch a torrent of unholy darkness spew from his mouth in a cone. As soon as... <laughs> well, the joke's on him. That's oh, my shit, favorite kind effects. of unholy darkness. Oh, those effects. Let's do this right now. Oh, goody. Did that reach us? <laughs> no, it missed. The non-magical light is stuff snuffed out. That would suck. Oh! Good thing there's magical light. <laughs> it's a scram. It technically doesn't hit since it's on his head. Your bolt. Yeah. That's magical anyway, so. Yeah, it affects magical light. Oh, right, yeah, that's what You have to roll a 1d20. One, uh, one it doesn't hit, because it's on like its forehead, isn't it? It's like a unicorn. Yeah. And it's coming out of its mouth. That's why I say it technically doesn't hit. He's a beautiful unicorn, guys. Just remember How does the angle of the cone? Well, it looked like it went out from here, and then stopped like right there. Because <laughs> the effect doesn't go that far. So, yeah, so Vannon looks like Vannon and Scram looks like they're out of it. Coolio. So Sebastian the Sword yeah, crumbles so Bastion into a ball. Fails there, he uh, turns the dust. Yeah. No, he just takes a death save. He's at two. Oh, right, because it's not on my crit because it's not a, a melee attack. All right, that terrified me for a moment. I'm good. I'm good again. So we all need to roll the wisdom save? <sighs> Correct. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all of us. Shit, oh, good. Me. Those are... I'm the best at those. I get a plus one. Oh, good. I'm out. Nope. That puts me at... Twice. <laughs> You go to zero and you are just at okay. zero. On your I'm turn, you have to make death saves. Cool. Oh. Okay. As with that, it's Vannon's turn. Bonk. This has gone about as well as I could have hoped. We did take half uh, damage, right? Vannon's going to if move and step of the wind, Sebastian, to here. Oh yeah, and all oh, your torches went. Not ideal. Uh, I think... Vannon's torches still up. Which, that's yeah. a thing. How many torches were out? Cain had a can torch? I, Two. Can I say something? Yes. Between, like, between turns? Like, as free actions? Technically. Uh, it, like, if, if I see Vannon going for Sebastian, I'm going to say, don't take him too far from the group. I need to be able to reach him. 
And then he's going to move up to here. All right. Come on now. So, who had torches that was in there? Was Barnabas, Kane, and Vannon? Uh, no, Barnabas right. gave one to Kane, Vannon, and Vannon Sebastian. Was, so, Vannon wasn't in the way, so. Yeah, Kane's torch went out. Okay. Fine. Which, unfortunately, I can't reach your character token because of big things. Yeah. There we go. I tried to move against the target. <laughs> <laughs> Them's the rules. Alright, so with that being Bannon's full action. Yep. It is now Kane's turn. I will hit it several times. <laughs> Hit three times now, because haste. Is it three or four? I think it's just three. You add one extra three. attack. Yeah, you can bonus attack. Yeah. Nice. Solid damages. Wow. As you continue hitting it over and over and over again, it just cries out in unenjoyment with your constant bombarding. Okay, I'm going to use second wind. <laughs> nice. As it dies. Okay. GG, guys. Need to roll to attack. No second wind to heal. Oh, second wind, not um, action surge. I got you. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking action surge as well. <laughs> oh, I should have done that. Probably. <laughs> Probably should have. Don't worry, guys. I'm a professional here. You're all safe with me. Did your axe still bit? Okay, second one's bonus action. Alright, I, I had to read that. Also, for the uh, Light Devourer, um, you guys took six more damage. If you succeed the DC, you took three damage. Okay, good to know. So we all take six more damage than the 34? Yeah, because it snuffed out two light sources. So do I get, like, more dead after that, or what? No. No, no you're okay. good. That's a good thing about 5e. You don't continue to die. You're just not in a good spot right now. That's and digital in 5e. So I'm dead or not. You know, it's great. Annalise. Um, I am going to uh, move... Scrum will call out, worry about Kane, also out Sebastian. I can't help but worry about everyone. And I want... Why can't I move? Select move. I can't move Annalise for whatever reason. But I would like to move her two squares to the left. Um, and then uh, walk my um, staff over my head and slam it down, casting Cure Mass Wounds. Or Mass Cure Wounds, I should say. Thanks. So everyone heals 12, and I heal 17. I can uh, everyone. Does that include the passed out people? That includes everyone. Oh, it's, cool. You Thanks. make a spear that has a 30-foot radius that's within that um, 60 feet. So you select the area within 60 feet, and from that area in a 30-foot radius, everyone gets healed. Right. It's not just 60 feet for me. Right. Never mind, then. Then that does suck. Um... 
in that case. Yeah, because I, I need to hit Sebastian. So I, I, I have to get both of, both of them up, and I can't get both I can of them guess, up. I can get spell. Sebastian. I've got, I've got Potion, I've got Misty Step, I can get Sebastian, don't worry. 30 feet, yeah, it's all 30 feet. Do um, you have Sebastian? I've got Sebastian. Alright, um, then instead of moving there, I would like, again, I don't know why I can't control Annalise right now. Oh, wait, no, I can. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, oh man. Yeah, I want to move so that I'm in range of everyone. And I think I am there. Cool. Yeah. Pop out in the center. And then everyone except for Sebastian gains the 12. There you go. <sighs> I gain 17. Um, am I up or do I need to spend an action to get up? You are conscious. You're a prone currently. Okay. So I would like. What's it going to take it's for me half to. It's your movement to stand up. I. Sorry, oh, and I, I use my action to then cast Searing Flame on Hellface. Oh. Or a Sacred Flame. Just putting that out there. A little piddly. Alright, so as you cast your Sacred Flame, you watch it immediately recoil from its damage. Cool. Violently. <laughs> Do you want to do the dexterity save? It fails it. Great. It's gargantuan. It probably is going to fail dex saves. Fireballs for everyone! Oh. <laughs> Each size increase past medium gives it minus two to dex by mechanic rules, so... I think that was only in five or 3.5. Nope. It's the same. Come on now. So, after Annalise heals it, you watch as its form begins to change from its cognitive form that you guys see to a darkness of whirlwind and cutting like edges and everything as at the end of Annalise's, it spends two legendary actions. Is there Wednesday Mummy Love coming to this? <laughs> Say again? You forgot to edit out the second Mummy Lord in the text. He just asked if there's another Mummy Lord in this somewhere. As a Mummy Lord around. spawns up next to Scram. Yep, for being a smart ass. <laughs> Scram touch it, it sets on fire, burns to death. Sound. <laughs> you wish it was that easy. I'm assuming the arrow doesn't stay in it when it turns into a vortex. No, it falls free. Shit. Equipment worn and carried by the Mummy Lord remains in its possession. Mummy Lord. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. It remains. It wasn't worn. It sort of is. It's like, it's like a piercing. That's an involuntary one. <laughs> so, Barnabas. If you're talking, you're muted. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna get up and scream at it, YEAH, YOU BETTER RUN! And then I'm gonna do a second wind. <laughs> As you- is that your turn? Uh, hold on. Second yeah. wind is the bonus, so you still have an action. Oh, I do? Cool. Yeah. Um, then... I guess I'll prepare an action so I can get a free attack if he comes back. 
Where did the whirlwind move to? You said it moved to Scram? No. No, that was a joke. That was the mummy lord. lord. He moved into the it darkness and darkness. Right, okay. Just back to annoying. Where did the shiny arrow land? Is it on... Did it fall into the... It's like right on the preface of this about falling okay. into the darkness. Cool. Uh, then yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm just preparing the action. You still up on you? What? Have you still up? Yeah. Yeah, I stood That's up, good. and then did the second one and raised the axe. All right. So he spends another his last legendary action as when you're uh, taunting him. Oh, bless. It's got a little piddly sacred, fr sacred flame as well. Evil sacred flame. I don't like mm -hmm. it. I'm so dark and edgy. Make a deck save. Make a deck save, okay. Those are my absolute bestest. I made it. Hey, did it, son. As you quickly roll out of the way as the darkness kind of makes into a black Embrace flame and the hits the ground next to you. Roll like a beach just, ball. Just watch as Danny DeVito falls to the ground and rolls out of the way. <laughs> Can I move a square moved. over for my action roll? Yes, yes. Technically, yeah. Boom. So, as you're able to evade that... Keep in mind... Oh, wait, no. it. No, you just did it, so... If anyone does hit it, they have advantage, because you did just do Sacred Flame, right? I did, in fact. Oh wait, no, no, you're thinking of Guiding Bolt, you're thinking of Guiding Bolt. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's Guiding a good Bolt. Point. That's what you're thinking of. Guiding Bolt is much better. Much better. Coolio, I'm gonna Misty Step 30 feet- Oh shit, wrong tool. Misty Step 30 feet towards Old Sebastian, and then use the um, 10 feet of my movement. And then we we'll pour a healing potion down his throat. Good boy. I'm telling him to get the fuck out of here. He convulses and chokes on it. <gasps> Thank you, my friend. How much did you heal him, buddy? Go ahead and roll it. Um, I missed on the healing potion, so what is it? 1d8 plus 4 or something? Never remember. Uh, basic healing potion or what? Yeah, basic. 2d4 plus 2. That's the one. Hey! Golf clap! He is no longer dying. As I need everyone to make a deck save. You even mean Sebastian? Everybody. Okay. So everybody, everybody. I get blessed to save the center. Cool. Twelve. Yeah. Does Annalise have bliss on her? No. I don't think you have it on yourself, do you? You're Are talking, you muted? you're muted? No, I don't have bless on me. Okay. So, everyone that did not succeed a DC of 14, the darkness lashes out from the edge and strikes at you like lightning. No, I don't have a fancy macro for this one. Can I roll right back into the spot I was in? <laughs> you know what? Sure. <laughs> I do the same beach ball roll right back to where I was at. As it strikes for 9 and necrotic damage. I'm going to choose not to take this damage. I take 3 points of damage. 
uncanny beach ball. <laughs> Stop it. I'm sure. 